Welcome to Real Chemistry, I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to talk about anions that act as bases. And that may seem strange to you, because you may remember that a base is something that gives up hydroxide ions. So how can an anion, like fluoride or bromine or chloride, act as a base? Well, to understand that, let's take a look at the equation below. What we see down here is hydrofluoric acid, so that is an acid, certainly not a base, splitting up into hydrogen ions and fluoride ions. And we're going to take a close look at this fluoride ions, and we're going to ask, if I just took fluoride ions and put them into solution, what would they do? Well, critical to answering that question is looking at the Ka. That's our equilibrium constant for our acid, and you'll notice it's very small, 10 to the minus fifth. So that's like 1 over 10,000, very small. So a small equilibrium constant means that mostly we have reactants in solution. So if I put HF down into solution, most of it's going to stay together. Now... What that means, though, is if I took just the fluoride ions, like say I took sodium fluoride and I drop it into solution. Well, now my fluoride ions are floating around, but they'd much rather be hanging out with a hydrogen ion. Fluorine loves hydrogen. That's what this Ka means. It means that it would rather combine with the hydrogen. So if fluoride loves hydrogen, if I just put fluoride itself into a solution, it's going to roam around until it finds a hydrogen and it's going to get together and it's not going to split apart. So fluorine really wants to be in a relationship. And that means, since it wants to grab onto that hydrogen ion, it acts like a base. So, anions from a weak acid, such as HF, HF is one of our weak acids, which we know it's weak because of its small Ka, love hydrogen plus. And that means that our fluoride acts as a weak base. But not all anions act as a base. For example... If I have hydrobromic acid, and it splits apart into hydrogen ions and bromine, well, we could ask the same question about bromine. Is bromine going to want to hook up with another hydrogen ion? Well, this Ka once again tells us the answer. It's got a really big exponent, 10 to the 9th. That means that most of my HBrs that I put into a solution are going to split apart. And what that means is that Br minus is totally fine staying alone. It's a loner. It doesn't care if it's with hydrogen ions. So Br- minus hates hydrogen ions. If it ever finds itself in a relationship with hydrogen ions, it breaks up immediately. And that means it doesn't act as a base. This guy is neutral. So anions from a strong acid hate hydrogen ions, and that makes them a weak base. Now we're going to talk about this in terms of conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So this language gets a little more technical than what we've been talking about here. Let's look at that. What a conjugate base is, is just the base that forms when an acid gives up its proton. Let me say that again. A conjugate base is the base that forms when an acid gives up its proton. So for example, HBr was the acid and HF was the acid, and they both give up a proton. What remains, then, is our conjugate base. So F- is a conjugate base. Br- is a conjugate base. That language is important because lots of times, if you look at your textbook, it will put all of this acid-base stuff in terms of conjugate bases and conjugate acids. Let's look at what that looks like. What that'll tell us, if you look in the textbook, the fancier definition, the one that doesn't talk about loving and hating protons, says that the conjugate base of a weak acid is a weak base. The conjugate base of a strong acid is neutral. So F- is the conjugate base of a weak acid, of HF. And that means that it is basic. On the other hand, Br is the conjugate base of a strong acid. It forms when B HBr gives up its proton. So that makes it neutral. So if you have the conjugate base of a weak acid, that's a weak base. If you have the conjugate base of a strong acid, that's neutral. Alright, so that's the conjugate base language that most of your textbooks will put this stuff in terms of. Let's do a practice example. We look at an ion, say NO2-, and we want to know, is it basic or neutral? Remember, our anions will almost always be basic or neutral. There's only a few random weird cases where it's acidic, and uh, 
almost always it will be basic or neutral. So how do we figure that out? Well, all we do is we take this guy, remember that's the conjugate base of some acid, but we need to know what acid that is. So the first step then is to add an H to the ion. Remember that when an acid gives up its H, we get the So if we add that H back on, we'll get the original acid. And the original acid is what's important for determining if it's basic or neutral. So we're gonna add an H back to it and we're gonna get then HNO2. And we wanna know, is this guy Weak or strong? Question mark. Well, you can look this up in a table, or you can do it by Ka, right? If the Ka is really big, it's a strong acid. If the Ka is really small, it's a weak acid. Or you can look at a table like this. These are the strong acids, the ones that you come up against all the time. So if an acid is not on this list, it's a weak acid. So what we'll notice then is I don't see HNO2 anywhere. I see HNO3, but that's not it. So that means this guy is then a weak acid. And so if the resulting acid that we made is weak, we know that the ion is basic. So this guy is in fact basic, and O2 minus is basic. This is though how we can go from an ion to deciding is that going to be a slightly basic ion or a neutral ion. All right, let's do a few more examples. In each case, we're going to add an H ion. And then we're going to decide if that resulting acid is weak or strong. If it's weak, then we know the ion is basic. If it's strong, we know the ion is neutral. So this guy will become HNO3. And we know that's actually on our strong acids list. So it's a strong acid. And so that means that our ion is, in fact, neutral. So this one is neutral. Now let's take a look at C2H3O2, which is the acetate ion. If we add a hydrogen, that'll become HC2H3O2. And that is not on our strong acid list. And acetate, uh, acetic acid is actually one of the most common weak acid examples. So since it's a weak acid, that means that this guy is basic. And really, I should write it right here, because we're talking about the ion that's basic. Of course, HNO3 is not neutral. HNO3 is acidic, so we'll put that right here. All right, then we have HSO4 minus. Well, if I add a hydrogen ion, that's going to become H2SO4. And H2SO4, notice, is one of our strong acids. So that means that this ion is neutral. Now, secretly, HSO4 minus can actually be one of those weird exceptions that can give up another proton, which you can actually sort of see because it has another H right there that it can give up. So this one actually turns out to be a little acidic. That's one of those weird exceptions that uh, most teachers wouldn't expect you to be able to predict, and I certainly wouldn't. Uh, but you should know that HSO4 actually can give up one of those other protons. But from our rules here, you'd predict that would be neutral. And then we have CN, and if we add a proton, we'll get HCN. This guy is not on our strong acid list, so that means that this guy is weak. And since it is in fact a weak acid, we know that the ion itself would be basic. So this is all we have to do. We take our ion, we add a hydrogen to it. If that resulting acid is a weak acid, then we know that our ion would be basic. It would act as basic because it's going to want to grab hydrogen ions. If on the other hand when we add hydrogen and it makes a strong acid, then we know it's neutral. And that's because the strong acids are always going to split apart, and those hydrogen ions are going to run free, and it's not going to be a basic solution. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on anions as bases. Remember, in most cases, anions act as bases, and we can tell based on whether they were associated with a weak base, I'm sorry, a weak acid or a strong acid. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can always subscribe or check out my channel for other videos.